What you're looking at is my phone list query where I have my employee's first name, last name, and their phone extension. And instead of just printing it off as is, I want to create a report based upon this query because I can organize my report. And I'm thinking of it in two ways. One is that if I just print it off as is, you can imagine if I had hundreds or thousands of employees, it would print all this off on the left-hand side of each page, wasting all the space in the middle and to the right-hand side. Well, in reports, I can go ahead and set up columns. So that way I can have two columns where when it gets to the bottom of page one, it can continue up at the top of page one in the second column and not wasting all that space. Second of all is I can go ahead and group these employees by the first letter of their last name and have the label for each group like a label A, maybe in bold, red, a color, and then have all the employees whose first letter in their last name begins with A grouped under that label and then the B's and the C's and so on. So to get started let me go ahead and close out of here and create that report by coming up here clicking on the create tab going to the reports group click on report design opens up the report in design view and then to base this report upon the uh, phone list to have that as its record source come up here on the design tab to the tools group click on property sheet make sure the selection is for the report if not click on the drop down arrow select report then on the alt tab in the record source field click in there click on the drop down arrow and the source of our data is going to be pulled from the phone list query and there we go let me go ahead and close out of here Next, I want to go ahead and add a label, let's say. So at the top of each page, we can have, you know, what this report's about. It's going to be our Dreamforce phone list. So to add a label up there, let me first come down here at the top of the detail bar and click and drag that down so I've got more space. Come up here, click on the uh, label, come down here, click there, and so it adds the label, then just start typing. Then when I'm done, there it is, Dreamforce phone list, hit enter. And then you can apply, of course, whatever formatting you want. Bold, make it a, you know, color red or a larger size. I'm going to go ahead and click and drag the border to move it right there. Looks good. Next, to go ahead and add the fields to the detail section, I want to come up here on the design tab to the tools group, click on add existing fields to bring up the field list here. We only have three fields. Now, instead of adding the last name and the first name, I'm thinking of combining them into one field. It's called concatenate. And to do that, I need to add an unbound text box and go ahead and bind that text box to an expression that I'm going to go ahead and write that will combine both those fields, last name and first name. So to do that, come up here, Design tab, Controls group, click on the text box, come down here in the Details section, click to add it. I'm going to go ahead and select the label, delete it, I don't need it. Select the unbound text box and bring up the properties for it. Right click on it, go down to Properties, and then come over here in the Properties sheet on the Alt tab in the Control Source field. And if I start writing the expression, such a small cell here is going to be cut off. So let me go ahead and zoom in by right-clicking and going to zoom. There we go. We've got more space here. Let me go ahead and copy and paste this in. Now the reason why I copied and pasted this in, I'll go over it in just a second. But first what you're looking at here is the equals symbol. You want to type the equals symbol or sign in because if you don't, this expression won't work. So we've got in square brackets the last, which is for the last name field. And then it has the ampersand, which means combine. Combine with what? What's to the right of that ampersand? We have open quotes, a comma, and a space. And then we have the ampersand that combines that to the first field or the first name. Why would I put a comma and a space in open quotes? Because I don't want it slammed all together, last name and first. I would like a comma and a space between the last name and the first name. Otherwise, I could just go ahead and delete all that and just have one ampersand between the last field and the first field, and it would just slam them all together. Now the reason why I copied and pasted this in is because when I copied it from Word, for some reason, it copies the formatting of the quotes. And Access doesn't like formatting applied to the quotes. So if I click OK, it goes, this doesn't work for us. We'll click OK. So we want to go ahead and right click, go back to zooming in. And then what you want to do is you just want to go ahead and type over those quotes or retype the quotes. So it gets rid of the formatting and applies the correct formatting. So you see the quotes aren't slanted, they're straight up and down. Click OK and, and Access doesn't have a problem with it. So after we concatenated or combined the last name with the first, let's hover over the uh, border of that text box and drag it up here in the uh, upper left hand corner of the details section. Next, let's come up here on the design tab to the tools group, click on add existing fields, and let's not forget the extension for each employee. So we'll click and drag that onto the grid in the details section, delete the label, and let's go ahead and select the border of the extension, click and drag that and put it just to the right of the uh, combined last and first name. 
Next, we want to go ahead and we want to add an additional header section. In other words, we want to group it by the first letter of the last name because right now it's just going to show all the records and not have them grouped. And as you recall in earlier training videos when we wanted to go ahead and group, let me close out of the field list here, come up here on the Design tab to the Grouping and Totals group and click on Group and Sort. Opens up the task pane down below or the window. Click on Add Group and you want to go ahead and group it by any one of these three fields? No. We need to create an expression that says go ahead and group it by the first letter of the last name, not just the last name. So click on it. Opens up the window here and let's go ahead and type in the expression, which is equals, type in, it's the left function. If you don't know what the left function is, you can watch my Excel 2010 training video on the left function. But basically what it is, is it's looking at the left part of a field. What field? Well, we'll pull it up in just a second. So I'll type in LFT and then I'll do open parentheses and then you can see the syntax for the left function says okay I need two things here first of all the string and the string is found in the last name field the characters in the last name field and as you recall open square brackets LAST is the name of my last name field last and then close square brackets and then comma and when I type that in it goes to the next part of the syntax the last part that says okay we're looking in the leftmost part of that field the last name so for example, Kershaw, we're looking and starting over to the far left, begins with the letter K. And then it goes E-R-S-H is going from left to right. Well, how long do we want to go ahead and read that name beginning over to the left-hand side? We just want to read the first character. So we type in the number one, close the parentheses, and then click OK. And there we go. So there's the group. It's going to group it by the first letter of the last name. But we don't have the first letter of the last name to have it grouped by. So we need to create an unbound text box that will have the same formula that will pull in the first letter in that last field for the last name. So come up here on the Design tab to the Controls group again. We're going to add another text box. Click on it. Come down here. Click in that section. Delete the label. Click and drag that over here. And then go ahead and bring up the property sheet for the unbound text box. You can go ahead and right click on it. Go to Properties. And then over in the Control Source, we want to go ahead and type in the same thing as you see here. Not the header, but just the expression there. Equals left. And as you can see, as I start typing, it wants to bring up that left function syntax where it has the left and the uh, two fields that you need to add in order to complete this function to have it work properly. The order of operation means that the last for last names coming first, then comma. The last order of the operation is to just count the first character in the last name. Hit enter. It accepts it. And then you can go ahead and apply some formatting to this. So go to the Format tab and make it bold and make it, I don't know, 14. You know, make it really stand out here. Let me hover over the top part of the detail bar and click and drag to expand it just a little bit here. Then hover over the right middle handle and click and drag just a bit. You know, open it up. Then I'm thinking about the group here is that, as you recall in an earlier training video, the group is on expression when you click More. By default, it wants to not keep the group together on one page. So if it gets to the bottom of page 1, 2, or 3, or any page, and it can't keep all the C's together, it'll split it. I don't want it split. So we'll go ahead and click on the drop-down arrow and say, keep the whole group together. So instead of splitting, put it at the top of the next page. All right, let's go ahead and close out of the group and sort. So that's not in our way. Close out of the property sheet. Scroll down to the bottom. I want to close this gap. So hover over the top of the page footer. Until you can see your arrows pointing up and down, and then click and drag that bar up, scroll up, and then put it snug right underneath the uh, text boxes here, so that way there's hardly any space between one record and the next. In fact, I can click and drag this down, so we've got the letter here just popping out, a little bit of space, and then all the uh, details there. So let's take it for a test drive, see what it looks like. Let's go ahead and right click, go to the print preview. All right, pretty cool. Except I don't like the lines around these labels here. We can go ahead and remove that. Not only that, but boy, um, these uh, alternating colors don't like that either. So I want to go ahead and remove those. And also, I want to add columns. So that way, when it gets down to the bottom of page 1, instead of going over to page 2 and wasting all that space, just go to the top of page 1 and continue down the middle in the second column and then maybe even a third column. So we want to make some changes here. Let's right-click, go back to the design view. Let's remove those alternating colors by uh, selecting the uh, detail bar for the detail section. Coming up here on the format tab to the background group, click on the alternate row color and say we don't want a color. Okay, And then we want to go to the page setup tab so we can go ahead and uh, 
add columns to our report. Click on columns. Right now the number of columns is one. Let's try three, see how that works. Then the column spacing is a quarter of an inch. Let's do 0 0.20. Now I don't want the column size, same as the detail. And then for the width, I'm going to go ahead and say, let's do two inches. Hopefully that's enough. Hit the tab key. And then for the column layout, instead of across then down, let's do down for the first column, and then across to the second column, and down the second column, and then across to the third, and then down, and so on. Click OK. And let's see if this looks any better. Let's go ahead and right click, go to the uh, print preview, because what you see here is going to print out. Now, we've got rid of the alternating color, but we didn't clean up the uh, borders around the labels here, in which case right click, go back to the design view, and go ahead and uh, Let's select the group here and go to the Format tab and change alternating color to no color so it doesn't alternate with the groups. And then go ahead and select the uh, label here and click on the shape outline to transparent. I'm going to also change two text boxes here to transparent, shape outline to transparent. And then go ahead and right click and go to uh, Print Preview. And OK, finally, that looks good. It looks clean. So when I go ahead and I click, it zooms out and I can get the overall uh, layout from a distance here. Seeing it going down to the bottom of page one, and then continuing on to the second column, and then we can go to the third and fourth. And Of course, we can go ahead and play with the uh, size or spacing in between the columns, but you get the idea where to go to make the changes. There it is, columns, in the print preview. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.